Welcome to GB Mag Chats. GB Mag Chats. Where international students get answers. Welcome to GB Mag Chats, where we answer the real questions international students have about living and studying in the UK. I'm Sophie, your host, and today we have Emma and Shivani joining us to discuss how to be vegan on a student budget. Shivani, would you like to introduce yourself first? Yes, of course. Thank you, Sophie. Hi, everyone. My name is Shivani, and I moved to the UK about a year ago from my home in Singapore to study at the University of Cambridge. I'm currently doing my degree in natural sciences, and I also happened to turn vegan about a year ago, so it was just before I came to the UK. And yeah, I'm really excited to be sharing my experiences today. Great, thanks so much. And Emma, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, um, I go to Swansea University and I'm from Birmingham and um, I do zoology and I love anything to do with conservation and the planet and animals. Thanks to both of you for being here. It's actually really great to have, so we've got Shivani, who's an international student and Emma, you're a home student, obviously. So great to have those two perspectives, but also interesting to hear both of your backgrounds as to how you became vegan and Shivani, you're quite recent and your reasons why, um, which will definitely, I'm sure, bring some great points of view to this episode. Um, Shivani, do you want to talk a bit more about that, about how you came to be vegan? And obviously, as you said, it was quite recent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So my family has been vegetarian for a really long time. So I was kind of raised mostly plant-based anyway. But it was around last year when my final exams were cancelled in school. So I was pretty jobless for like the entire summer and like a few months before that. And I happened to come across quite a few um, documentaries about veganism. And one of my favorite teachers in school had also begun to identify herself um, as being vegan. And I was I was really like, you know, interested. What, what is this term? Why are people becoming vegan? And I feel like these days, there's just lots of people around us who are starting to call themselves vegan and like becoming more intrigued by the term. So I feel like the awareness is increasing. I kind of wanted to, I was just curious actually to know what the whole movement is about and like, why are people becoming vegan? So I kind of just used some of my free time to watch a few documentaries and just read up on various articles and um, the issue as a whole with like the various industries concerned with it. And yeah, that's when I decided I want to become vegan. And I know for a lot of people, it is an overnight step, but actually for me, it wasn't. It did take me some time to completely become vegan. Um, but yeah, that's when I kind of, I think once you make the conscious choice to become vegan, then it becomes easier to slowly educate yourself more and more and then figure out ways how you can become more and more plant-based and eventually um, hopefully vegan. That's interesting that it was a gradual process for you, because as you say, I know quite a few people who they do it and there's no looking back and it's all or nothing. So that's that's very interesting. Was that the same for you, Emma, or was yours more overnight? I, I was pretty cold turkey. So I, I was a meat eater all my life. And then I got into year 11 and I was doing GCSE. So like five or six years ago now. And um, I like to snack quite a lot, especially when stressed. And a lot of the food that you would snack on would be unhealthy. It'd be like chocolate or like something. So from a health perspective, I went vegan just so I didn't snack and be unhealthy. So I went vegan and then I started reading a lot about it and like watching lots of documentaries like Cowspiracy and all of that. And then recently there was that Seaspiracy. And like, I just would never go back now because I just think it's so damaging to our environment, especially like with the climate crisis that we're going through now. No, <laughs> I wouldn't go back to not being vegan. So yeah. It's, it's amazing the impact that these documentaries have because I feel like it's not surprised, like you've both mentioned documentaries being a big part of the reason, but it's really interesting to hear from both of you, your, your backgrounds as to how you became vegan. So the first category I think we want to talk about is shopping for vegan food, because before you get to the cooking of it, obviously, there's the shopping. Um, we've got obviously supermarkets in the UK do stock vegan. But I'd like to hear from both of you specifically as as students on a on a vegan diet. Shivani, I'll come to you first. What was your experience of actually going shopping and doing your food shop? I must say, coming from Singapore, I'm just in love with the UK in terms of how vegan friendly the supermarkets and grocery stores are. I've never seen this much variety of vegan things back home and it's just so refreshing. And I feel like for someone who's newly vegan, it's just so easy to be vegan in the UK, which I think is such a great blessing. In terms of supermarkets, I feel like, as you said, you have so many things available, but 
what I found is that going back to the basics often the most budget friendly. So since I was raised vegetarian, I never really had much of a craving for any kind of meaty texture or flavor anyway. But I think even if you do, like most of the mock meats or like corn products might be quite um, appealing initially. But I think the overall goal might be for you to move back more to the um, fundamental fruits and veggies and fresh produce over like mock meats and processed um, anything processed. Because I feel like mock meats are more expensive than like tofu and chickpeas and those kind of things, which are actually so, so, so cheap when you shop for them. So I mostly do tend to shop for canned um, lentils and chickpeas and um, beans. And I tend to go for tofu if I want more protein. And I just stick to trying to incorporate as many veggies and fruits as I can into my diet. So literally, I just look for colors. And like every week, I just think, how many colors can I get into my food? Um, and I feel like overall, as in terms of a budget point of view, but also a health point of view, shopping this way has um, helped me the most. And I think also just made it easy to shop. So I think those are my um, top shopping tips in terms of what to look out for in grocery stores. Love the idea of shopping for colours. <laughs> Yeah. Such a nice way of looking at it. I was like, that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> Why isn't everyone doing that? Um, Emma, what about you? Do, you? do you feel the same, obviously, being in the UK? Do you also think it's actually quite easy to shop here? I do, because um, like Shivani said, they've got so many like vegan products out now. When I first went vegan, um, I think it was like five or six years ago, um, they they did not have the f- the fake meats or the bacon, which I quite like. Or like, I like it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or any of like that sort of stuff. They didn't even have good vegan chocolate, but um, they've really come a long way. But like Shivani said as well, it is sometimes a bit of a scam because it is still quite expensive to buy the fake meat, the fake chocolate and things. So I would only really ever have it as a treat. But then once you become vegan and you watch these documentaries and your morals change from an animal to plant based kind of lifestyle diet, um, you don't really crave the meat texture because you're craving an animal and Mm -hmm. you can have a little like of a, I don't know, a juxtaposition thing going on inside of your, well, psyche really, because you just feel like I shouldn't want these things, but part of me still is craving it. Mm -hmm. So I think treat your cravings but try not endorse them like go for more of the canned stuff go back to the pulses and like Shivani said the canned stuff it's so cheap and you can get like three for two in most supermarkets and you can chuck it in like with almost anything with the chickpeas and the lentils and also frozen fruit because I don't know about you Shivani but fresh fruit and veg like when you're at uni it goes off so quickly and it's so expensive so if you buy like frozen veg, frozen fruit, you're getting the same vin- vitamins and minerals, but you just, um, it's not going off and it's not going to go into food waste and you're saving some money there, really. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, you're definitely right, because I think there's the consideration of what's actually just expensive anyway. But shelf life is a huge thing that you have to think about, maybe even for the first time when you're first at university as well. You don't really think about that when you're not doing your own food shopping and then you realize how much money you can just waste don't you and I thought it was really interesting what you touched on Emma about the cravings and satisfying cravings because I think that probably completely depends like Shivani I know you said you were brought up vegetarian so for you you weren't really missing anything whereas some people have the certain things they really miss like I just just wish I could just eat chicken nuggets or so I think there's as you say it's definitely good to have those things there as a treat but I'm so I'm not vegan but I'm vegetarian but I have been since I was about seven or eight I was really little yeah so I I think like all I know is I I quite like the taste of corn like when you said with the bacon I don't even know what bacon tastes like but I know I like the bacon (laughs) so I don't think it's filling any kind of void I'm just like I like this thing but as soon as you realize you can actually do those substitutes like things like lentil bolognese instead of the pretend mints there's there's so many things out there I think I read something recently um, a recipe where you can make pretend tuna out of chickpeas like tuna mayonnaise yeah you can you can stick like chickpeas and nori and like salt in and give it a whiz and apparently yeah tuna mayo so yeah it's just amazing what you can do with those cheaper items and especially the tinned ones that will go a lot further And I know, Emma, you mentioned about the zero waste store on campus. Mm. I was thinking about in terms of campuses these days, because, again, it's all changing so fast. What Mm. other sort of facilities that were specific to 
veganism did either of you find maybe maybe some more than others with different universities and Swansea I don't know like it just had everything for me it had the outdoors life it had a good great uni great lecturers um who really were like so are so passionate about the environment and it really like even though you kind of have that love for the environment because I think every vegan or vegetarian does like you just you love the environment you love the world um I feel like these lecturers and Swansea it kind of nurtures that and like you know makes you love it even more and then especially when they provide things for you like the zero waste shop or the vegan veggie shop and they make it just easier for you for like your lifestyle like catering I don't know the uni to you which is really really nice and it makes you feel like you want to do even more so yeah (laughs) And Shivani, what about your experience of that? Do you have any specific things that are geared towards veganism and environmentalism as well? So I think um, definitely if your college or university does not cater to vegan options, I think it's definitely worth writing to the catering department and like notifying them that like there is this revolution coming and like you have to be able to cater to people who want to go plant-based because it is better for the university. I feel like they do save a lot more money because um, meat is expensive for them to buy and cook. And in terms of like carbon impact, I think unis do do really care about their reputation in terms of like how environmentally friendly they are. So it's definitely worth reaching out to your uni like catering department and letting them know and giving that kind of pressure if, if they don't already cater to you. Absolutely. I think that's a good point that sort of um, for listeners who might be weighing that up, it's not worth not considering it if it doesn't seem as vegan friendly because that's what student unions are all about like you can definitely have your say and have an impact in that sense so I think it's definitely worth keeping in mind to reach out to and almost pressure them to consider it as well because as you say it only does them and their reputation in the world of good and how about eating out because obviously that's kind of a luxury anyway as a student but especially when you're on a specialist diet or have dietary requirements I know it can be quite tricky Again, I think it's probably one of those things that's getting so much easier now. But do, do you guys or did you eat out much with other friends and students? And did you find there were plenty of options for you? Yeah, I don't I don't tend to eat that much out there, especially during term time. But I mean, one, I do find the UK is so, so generous in terms of the amount of options available in restaurants these days. But then sometimes if you don't see something on the menu, doesn't mean that it necessarily doesn't really cater to you. So I think it's so worth it to just talk to the staff there and explain to them that you're on a vegan diet. And I don't think the term is foreign to anyone these days. Like they know exactly what you're talking about most of the time. And a lot of them are willing to make little changes. Like the chefs are really nice sometimes and they're willing to just omit a few ingredients here and there to make it like vegan friendly, which is really nice. So I think definitely speak up to the staff and you don't have to feel like the odd one out. Just, just, just talk to them and they'll be able to help you. Another thing that I find really useful is that lots of Instagram pages these days and a few I, I love are called um, I think like Accidentally Vegan UK and like Imi Keys, I think is one of like a digital artist who does like little illustrations of very common things you can find in supermarkets that are not labeled vegan, but they actually are like after reading the ingredients list. Oh, and I just okay. love her like art so much. She does like little drawings of crisps, chocolates, biscuits, um, literally every kind of snack you can think about in grocery stores that are so popular, but they are never really labeled vegan, but they are. And I save all of her Instagram posts on my phone so like I can go to the grocery store and buy. So like, for example, I know Tesco chocolate digestives are actually vegan and not many people know about that. Um, no way. But the, yeah, but the McVitie's ones aren't. And yeah, I don't know, it just changed my life because I love chocolate digestives. And like hobnobs are vegan. Just so many cookies that you don't think are vegan or actually are. So just loads of Instagram pages these days, like accidentally vegan, just using that hashtag will get you up so many um, um, results. So yeah, it's definitely really handy for like, if you're on a night out and you're just going to the supermarket at like 11 in the night and like you don't know what to get because there's nothing labeled vegan but there's lots of things that are vegan <laughs> that's amazing I never would have known that so that's <laughs> really really great tip accidentally vegan got it yeah <laughs> cool and then sort of from eating out to eating in recipes I feel like is, is the bit we all want to talk about because it's so exciting and especially as you've both said you've gotten quite into cooking through being vegan I'm just dying to know some of your some of your best recipes, I mean, don't by any means feel you have to go through <laughs> every step of the method, but I'd just love to hear some of your sort of top student vegan recipes. Emma, what about you? Dying to know what those recipes are? Head to wherever you get your podcast fix and listen to the full episode now. GB Mag.